In this class, we're going to consider the reverse chain rule. So this is a technique we can use to evaluate integrals, in particular, which are in this format here. So essentially a, a composite function, so you've got this internal linear function and this overall sort of exponential function. And we already looked at how we can solve these in the previous class using integration by substitution. And in this class, we're going to essentially use the same technique, but we're not going to formalize it as much as making it a substitution. We're going to use a more kind of intuitive method, just relying upon the fact that integrals and derivatives are inverse operations of each other. So in general, we're looking at integrating the form ax plus b to the power of n. I mean, this internal part could be more complicated than that. That's a basic sort of linear expression, uh, ax plus b, but it could be more complicated. The rule would still apply if it was more complicated. And as you work through examples of this technique, you'll see different types of presentation and you'll just kind of adapt the technique as you go along. But essentially, it's this format here that we're looking for. Now, like I said, we already know how to solve these using a substitution. So generally, in this, case, in this scenario, we're going to let u or some other letter, but usually u, equal ax plus b. And then we kind of go from there um, and we change the integral into a different format, into something that we know how to easily integrate, usually using the power rule. And then we kind of work backwards to get the final answer. And there's quite a lot of work in that. And it turns out that we can use this method we're going to look at in this class, the reverse chain rule, as a kind of alternative to that substitution method. The substitution method's great, but it does sometimes require a little more work than the method we're going to look at here. So before we get to looking at these two examples, let's just backtrack a little and think about, first of all, the chain rule for differentiation. So we're going back to derivatives for a moment. So let's consider this here, which is in the correct kind of format that we're looking for, ax plus b to the power of n. And let's say we want to take the derivative of this expression. So cast your mind back to how derivative chain rule works. So remember, chain rule is all about composite functions. So we've got this, again, linear internal function and this overall exponential function. And the way this works for a derivative is it's kind of using the power rule twice, really. Um, so you basically would take the four in front, so you're multiplying by the power, you kind of leave the bracket alone, you reduce the power by one, so essentially that, that is just doing the power rule for differentiation on the bracket. Um, but then the thing that makes it the chain rule is to then multiply by the derivative of the inside of the bracket. And the derivative of the inside is three. Okay, like that. And then simplifying these by multiplying the three and the four together gives us 12 bracket 3x plus 5 to the power of 3. Okay, so that is a derivative of that composite function. Now, it should be because we now know that derivatives and antiderivatives or integrals are inverses of each other. It should be that if we then integrate this here, we get back to where we started. So in other words, I'm claiming that the integral of this thing here, 12, 3x plus 5 to the power of 3 dx, should take us back to this thing here. So 3x plus 5 to the 4. Now, if you think about the steps we've gone through there, we've we multiplied by the power, reduced the power by 1, and then multiplied by the derivative of the inside of the bracket. If we can reverse those steps, which should tie in with how we integrate anyway, then we should get back to that original function. So thinking about reversing those steps, that would require us to increase the power by one. So we would take this guy here and increase the power by one. So, well, I'll just leave the 12 in front for the time being. So three X plus five, increasing the power by one, dividing by that new power, okay, dividing by four, but then also dividing by the derivative of the inside of the bracket, because in this step here, we multiplied by the derivative. So if we're going to reverse that, we have to divide by the derivative. So the derivative, as we know, of the inside is three. So we could make this all over three, or we could write divided by three, but a neater way to do it is just to put the three on the bottom of this fraction, because the overall thing here is going to be divided by three, if we times the denominator by three. So if you're ever dividing a fraction by a whole number, you can just multiply the whole number to the denominator of the fraction, and that has the same effect as dividing by it. So that is essentially what we get if we reverse the steps. 
We've taken an integral here, so we need our plus c on the end. And if we just um, tidy that up a little, we can see that 4 times 3 is 12. The 12 on the top, the 12 on the bottom would cancel. And then we just get, as a final answer, 3x plus 5 to the power of 4 plus the c. And that is the thing that we were looking for um, because that is our sort of starting function. So basically we've worked the derivative composite uh, function rule, the chain rule, backwards on this integral to go back to where we started. So that's essentially how we use the, the chain rule. It's just like the chain rule for derivatives, but going backwards with the steps. And again, just to make the point clear, you could use a u substitution on this and you would still get the same answer. You might be more comfortable with that. I mean, I'm really just giving you the option here to use either method. So let's see how this method stacks up with these over here. You can capture this essentially in a formula. You could say that if this is exactly the format you've got, then doing what we just did there, it would be take the, the bracket, increase the power by one, divide by the new power, which is n plus one, multiplied by the derivative of the inside of the bracket. And if the inside is exactly ax plus b, then a, a on its own is going to be the derivative. So you're going to get this here um, as your derivative. You could tidy that up by putting the a in front of the n plus 1, but essentially that would be a formula. And sometimes you do see that written in textbooks as a formula for the reverse chain rule. The only problem with that is if the inside of the bracket gets a little funkier, if for example we put a squared in there, then a is no longer going to be the derivative of that expression, so you would need to modify it. And, and that sometimes happens. Maybe actually, maybe we should think about maybe modifying this one a little. Let's maybe, yeah, let's put a squared on there just to mix it up. Okay, so applying the reverse chain rule to this one here, we just go through the steps. So increasing the power by 1, just like normal integration, increase the power by 1, divide them by the new power, and then divide them by the derivative of the inside of the bracket. The derivative of 6 plus 2x is 2. Again, we're just going to put that 2 on the bottom, so we're dividing by multiplying it to what's already on the denominator of the fraction, putting our plus c on the end, and then just taking a line to tidy it up. So this is going to be 12. You can either write it as over 12 or 1 12th. Um, I generally prefer to write it as 1 12th. I think it just, I don't know, for, for me it sits a little tidier, but it's up to you. It's personal preference, either like this or 6 plus 2x to the power of 6, all over 12. Either way would be, be fine. And that's basically the, the answer. So probably a bit quicker than a U substitution, I think you'll find. Um, and in scenarios where you've got exactly this format, I would say this is, well, partially this is a method that I would use rather than formally going through a U substitution. But your, your question type might necessitate that you use a U substitution or your teacher might ask for it to be presented as a U substitution. So you might need that more formal method anyway. Okay, looking at this slightly more complicated example, so just doing the same thing, we're going to increase the power by 1. So this time we've got a negative 4 power, so increasing it by 1 is going to go up to negative 3. Dividing by that new power, which is minus 3, and then dividing by the derivative of the inside. Now, it's only a slight increase in complication here because the derivative of the inside is no longer just going to be a letter like, uh, sorry, like the A is here, like the number that basically goes in front of the X like we had here, or like we had here, the derivative was three here, the derivative was two here. This time it's the derivative of this expression, which is going to be eight X, because the derivative of four X squared is eight X, and the derivative of minus seven is zero. So we're going to be multiplying this to eight X, and then we need our plus C on the end. So just tidying that up a little, we can multiply these guys together, so the top line stays the same. 4x squared minus 7 to the power of minus 3. And then all of that is going to be over minus 24x. So you might want to pull the minus just in front of the bracket. That might be a neater way to write it. And then put in a 24x on the denominator, carrying the plus c all the way through. And you can always check these by you know, differentiating backwards. So if you differentiate this here using the chain rule, you should eventually get back to this point. And that should be the same with this one here. If you differentiate this thing here, you will eventually, hopefully, go back to this point here, if you've done it correctly. 
So that's how we use the reverse chain rule. It's particularly geared towards expressions in, if I take the two out of there now, expressions of this format here. And you might just find it's a quicker alternative to using a U substitution. But like I said, there might be times when you still want to use a U substitution or you're asked to use a U substitution. So I'm not saying that this is an alternative and forget about U substitution. You should really ideally learn both. This is just a more intuitive method. It's more just working differentiation backwards because that's what integration is. It's an antiderivative. It's an opposite, the inverse of differentiation. And that's essentially how this rule sort of manifests. So a handy little rule, you'll often see integrals are in this format here. So it's good to have these tools um, at your disposal to be able to choose which method is gonna work best and be most efficient, and which is gonna reduce the chance of uh, making a mistake. So definitely, definitely worth spending a bit of time making sure you understand this technique and working a few practice questions before you move on to the next class.